Wow, I've done an extremely poor job at differentiating this account from my liability. So please allow me to backtrack and uh, listen to me for the next five minutes or so. Give you a big summary of my liability versus Southman. So my liability, the goals on it are obviously probably very familiar to you guys at this point. 60 attack, 99 strength, 31 prayer, obviously remaining at 1 defense, 10 hit points, and the ability to eventually get Dragon Claws. At the stage of my liability's account, I'm PKing, and I'm PKing a lot. I'm addicted. I'm probably PKing 4 or 5 hours a day. But as I continue to PK, I continue to die more and more on the account. With 10 hit points and no overheads, it is extremely hard. I'm a target. People know my name. As soon as they see me, they attack me because they know I have 10 HP. And there's no way for me to defend myself. So I've had to get creative in terms of hugging trees uh, and, and things like that in order to not get hit. But with that being said, there's still many downfalls. A lot of the times when I'm rushing, my opponents have their auto retaliate on. And for example, if I'm rushing a ranger, they'll automatically hit me back a 10 with their magic short bow and rune arrows, and I'm in Lumbridge. Some people even are venged. They have their mains venge other them, and I have no way to tell until I go for the rush and I'm in Lumbridge as well. As you guys know, I've worked extremely hard on my liability, and I'm so proud of the account and all the accomplishments I've made. But that proudness can often be overshadowed by dying over and over in the wilderness. With that being said, I really, really want to get 43 prayer. I'm not saying it's going to solve PKing. I'm still going to die a lot. I'm 10 HP after all. But what I am saying is it's at least going to give me the opportunity to survive and either death dot on my opponent uh, and teleport out or allow me to tank a hit or two and continue to DDS spec and get kills. But I feel like I've put so much effort into my liability with 31 prayer, doing everything from Lost City to Desert Treasure and other quests like that. I feel like if I get 43 prayer now, I wouldn't be able to forgive myself. So with that being said, I've thought long and hard and I always have had the second account called Southman as a backup plan. If you guys remember my intro of my series where I say if I get 11 HP I'm restarting and that's a fact. Southmitten was going to be the backup plan but as I've continued to think on this what I've decided is I want Southmitten to fill the void in terms of the overhead prayers that my liability can never have. I also want him to fill the void with another thing that my liability will never be able to have and that's a granite mall. You see it's nearly mathematically impossible for me to get the granite mall and stay at 10 HP on liability. This was the first 10 HP account I've ever made with no guide or direction. If you remember, Kemp Q didn't start uploading videos on his 10 HP until he was about 1500 total. I was the first larger YouTuber to upload beginning stage content on a 10 HP Iron Man account and still think I'm the only one. The 10 HP network is a small network of people. So that being said, I've made a lot of mistakes. And what I'm getting at is the mistakes I've made on my liability combined with the fact that I would have to get extremely good RNG to get a granite mall without ruining my 10 HP account, I just don't think it's possible. And at this point, I'm already 60 attack. It wouldn't make sense for me to get the granite mall anyways. If I was going to get the granite mall, I would stay at 50 attack. So now you're seeing there's an empty void and there's a passion and burning sensation of me wanting to get overheads and me wanting to get a granite mall. And this is where Southman comes in. Southman is my solution to get all the things and be the account that my liability will never be. So I'm pretty sure that answers the elephant in the room of what most of you guys were thinking when you watched episode number one. What's the point of this one? Where's the other account? Or are you playing two? I'm confused. I gotta be honest buddy, I absolutely loved your videos lately. The first 10 HP Iron Man series is one of my favorite series on YouTube. But what's the purpose of this one? 
So I think I've answered those questions. But there was also some other concerns. Someone said same series, different account. Kind of boring, to be honest. What I will say is South Mitten and My Liability aren't really going to be doing a lot of the same things. For starters, South Mitten is going to be based around Slayer. I need 70 Slayer to get the Granite Mall. With Wild Pies, of course, that gives me the plus 5 Slayer bonus. On the other hand, I've never slayed on My Liability. I'm either 22 or 23 Slayer, and all that has come from experience. Experience lamps. So that's the first part of big content that you guys have never seen before from me. The second thing is my liability is an extremely conservative account. If you guys realize in the intro when I said if I get 11 HP I'm restarting and that's a fact. And obviously I don't want to restart. I've put so much time and effort into the account. So with that being said I'm not doing a lot of the high risk high reward stuff such as doing like the no XP method where I could potentially finish one small favor and things like that. But on the other hand, South Mountain is going to be completely different. I'm going to take those high risk, high reward stuff. I'm going to be doing the one tick, no HP melee experience method, and I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to accidentally get hit points experience. And that's a fact, but that's okay because I don't think I'll be able to get the Granite Mall at 10 HP anyways, unless I get extremely lucky. And I don't want this to be an RNG account. So if I get 11 HP or 12 HP or even 13 HP, it's not going to matter. And in the long run, it's going to help me when I'm rushing. I'm still going to try my hardest to stay at 10 HP on this account, but if I don't, it's not the end of the world. The Granite Maul is just a stronger rushing weapon than even the Dragon Claws will be. I've looked at the potential damage output in just a couple of seconds, and your Granite Maul beats both the Dragon Dagger and the Dragon Claws. 9 out of 10 times, I bet. But with that being said, I also don't want you to be discouraged and think that I'm giving up on my liability. I want the Dragon Claws to have the most unique 10 HP account in RuneScape. I was inspired to make the account after the most unique account series I made. And yes, season 2 is coming by the way, so be patient with me on that. And I will accomplish that goal. But you just have to understand, I have a burning desire, like I said, and there's an unfilled void that I want to fill, and that's where Southman comes in. In episode number 1, I opened 318 Winter Tot crates, all from World 9 Winter Tot, which is the Winter Tot world. In that world, you typically get between 750 and 1000 points doing the fletching method. I've decided for the remainder of 99 fire making, I want to do solo Winter Tot. I've never done solo before. Solo Winter Tot offers many benefits that World 9 just simply doesn't offer, such as the ability of getting the maximum amount of Winter Tot crate rolls in a game which is 28 and that is accomplished after hitting 13,500 winter top points and on top of that solo winter top also gives you an enormous amount of construction experience and one of the reasons why that is, is in Winter Tot, the braziers break more and more as the game becomes closer and closer to ending. So if we can purposely manipulate the game to stay between 5% and 15%, the braziers will break quite often, and in essence, we'll be getting more construction experience. I need 65 construction for the restoration pool, which will allow me to restore my own special attacks. This will obviously be useful when rushing. And then with 67 construction, I'll be able to make my own house teleport tabs, which will be good for both rushing and everyday use. Okay, here we go. My first ever solo winter tot run. So we'll light this. We'll head over here, pick the roots so I can heal the pyromancer. Heh, <laughs> shocker have to do Druidic Ritual. So let's leave quickly and go do that. So the first thing I'll be doing is collecting all the raw meats. As I explained in the intro, this account's approach will be more of a risk reward gameplay. So with that being said, I'll be doing the no HP method. For those of you who don't know what this is, basically I'm stalling an attack. As soon as this rat respawns, I will be attacking it on the same ticket respawns, which prevents me from getting any melee experience. This is a very risky method because I only have one tick, which is 0.6 seconds to time this correctly. If I'm more than 0.6 six seconds off, I'll attack on the wrong tick and in essence get strength and hit points experience. Oh yeah, it worked, it worked, I hit a seven. Get back here. Now just reco recoil it. There we go, okay. First one done. Uh... All right, come on baby. 
Please hit. Nope. All right, we're going to give it one more attempt here. If I don't get this, then we're just going to go ahead and do waterfall to get to 30 attack. Then I'll have no issue. But I've tried probably 25 times. Ho, 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 ho. Okay. Let's go ahead and do, um, do waterfall. Okay, so for this part of the quest, I'm going to be using the help of Mac H. So Mac H is going to be tanking the Moss Giant here for me. That way I don't get one hit. I'm going to quickly go over here. Oh, I didn't realize there was a second Moss Giant, but that's good that the Skelly's attacking me. And there's the amulet. Now Mac H will once again assist over here. Hit this Moss Giant. Quickly search the tomb. There we go. And then we'll finish with Mac H just hitting this again. So yeah, very easy way for you to do waterfall if you're a 10 HP account, just get a tank. The only other difficult part of the quest is getting past the fire giants. So the best method where you don't have to get another account is just to attack the giant spider, lure it halfway through the fire giant room, and then from there the fire giant won't be able to attack you since you're already in combat. As soon as you're about halfway across, you can just quickly run to the door without getting attacked by the fire giant. Okay, this should complete the quest. There we go. One quest point, 13... 1750 strength and attack xp two diamonds two gold bars and 40 mithril seeds which will be great um for future quests like desert treasure because flowers are certainly important for that quest uh addy dagger thank you now this should definitely hit moment of truth there we go got it Okay, there we go. Raw bear meat accomplished. Okay, let's see if we can set this next one up. <gasps> what the hell just happened? Well, the method isn't perfect. Um... I'm not going to hold my head, you know, too low on this uh, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is because it took me five or seven HP XP on my liability. So there was four XP. If I would have done this the uh, the right way prior to the release uh, of this method, the no XP method, I would have got four XP as well. So one XP for the cow, one XP for the chicken, one XP for the bear and then one XP for the rat. So as long as I um, don't mess this one up, uh, I should be kind of in the same area that I would have been in. There we go. Okay, there we go. So all four of the beefs are completed I'm in search of a quest and druidic ritual completed now i think we should be able to start doing um solo winter top but i'm not sure there, there could be a requirement that i don't know of i guess we'll find out in a minute
Okay, here we go. Here comes 99. Yes, sir. Your fire making level is now 99. You are now a master of fire making. Why not visit Ignatius south of Sears Village? It's something special for only the true masters of the fire making skill. Heck yeah. So first 99 on South Mitten, officially accomplished on Sunday, April 7th, 2019. Okay, this could be it. 1%. See if we can maybe get this one lit over here real quick. Oh, didn't even need to. Awesome. So that's going to complete it. The last winter tot supply crate for a while. Let's go to the bank and see how many I ended up getting from 92 to 99. So 33 crates we have the ability to open. Before I open them, I want to get 40 mining, 40 herbler, and 40 farming. And the reasons why are as follows. I want to get 40 mining to increase the probability of rolling gold ore when I open the crates. When I opened up the first 318 crates, I got quite a bit of silver ore. And a lot of the reason was because I was only 11 mining. Silver ore can be used to make silver jewelry for teleportation purposes, but there's no way I'm going to need much more than what I have. In turn, if I get 40 mining, I'll be able to roll more gold ore, which I can use to make ring of recoils, ring of dual links, and so forth. Like I said, I also want to get 40 herbler to give me a higher probability of rolling better herbs. In my first 318 rolls, I was only one herbler. And as a result, I only got two rainars. Rainars are going to be super important because I need them to make prayer potions, which I'll be using a lot of when I'm doing Slayer. In my first 318 rolls, I was only one farming as well. And as a result, I only got Terramin, Harlander, and Toadflax seeds. If I get 40 farming, it'll increase my probability of getting better seeds like Raynar seeds, Irrit seeds, and Quorum seeds, which each obviously have their own individual perks. With the Raynar seeds, I'll be able to make more prayer potions. With the Irrit seeds, I'll be able to make super attack potions. And with the Quorum seeds, I'll be able to make super strength potions. Therefore, we'll see you guys in episode number three as we continue on our journey to get those stats, open the supply crates, and then start questing for Slayer.